You're listening to Arirang Radio's Wonders of Jeju. This is a segment where we tell you about the lives of people living right here on the island. I'm your host, DJ Jamie. This is Humans of Jeju. Welcome to the studio, Jay. <laughs> How are you, Jamie? <laughs> you look very cute in your outfit today. Oh, thank you. I, I, first of all, I like uh-huh. the color beige, uh-huh. and your T-shirt goes very nice with beige. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> kind of like a schoolboy fashion today. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. You know the preppy Sh- Try style. to try to stay young. You yeah. Know? Oh, yeah, well, trying you, to. you are young. <laughs> And you've thank got you. some uh, people cheering you coming in. Paulina says, hello, Jay. Happy oh, Thursday. Yes. Hi, Paulina. <laughs> Happy Thursday. Uh-huh. We love Thursday. Do you love? Oh, because of Humans of Jeju. <laughs> yes. yes, of course. Because we get to see you. So, well, it's, it is good to see you. Mm-hmm. And I'm wondering what you have in store for us today. Yeah. Uh, so, Jamie, yes. what do you think about the seas of Jeju Island? Oh, well, there's so much to say about them. <laughs> do you think they're clean? Oh, or? yes, I do. Because I actually, mm-hmm. uh, one day I was chasing, I was in the water playing, mm-hmm. and I chased an uh, octopus, a baby octopus. Oh, really? Because I was able to see it. Wow. And I was playing f- with it for about almost 20 minutes. Wow. So if I got close, mm-hmm. it would squirt ink uh-huh. and then go. And then I would get close, it would squirt another Whoa. ink and then go. And I could keep following it because the water was so clean. Wow. <laughs> I, I've never had that experience. Really? But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's awesome. It um, was fun. And there is a reason why the seas of Jeju Island are so clean. Uh, today, we're going to introduce a club mm-hmm. and the member of the club who protect the Jeju seas mm-hmm. by keeping it clean. Oh, I see. So is this manager uh, of this wonder club? Yeah, this wonderful club? Yes. Yes. Uh, let's meet him. Okay. So who is this manager I was about to say? <laughs> yeah. And we're going to meet him <laughs> yes, first. Sounds good. 안녕하세요. 저는 어, 정연철입니다. 전 제주도에 온 지는 이제 한 9개월 정도 된것 같고요. 원래는 서울에서 태어나서 자라고 어, 제주도를 워낙 좋아해서 1년 살이도 하고 한달 살이도 하고 하다가 이제 작년 말쯤에 다시 오게 됐습니다. 저는 원래는 사진을 전공했는데 어, 환경 문제에 관심을 갖게 되면서 이제 플라스틱 공예 작업을 시작했고요. 병뚜껑 같은 거 모아서 이렇게 업사이클링 하는 작업을 하고 있고 또 제주도 와서는 이제 제주 클린 보이스 클럽이라는 이름으로 쓰레기 줍기 활동을 시작했습니다. 그래서 어 지금까지 계속 어 쓰레기를 줍고 있습니다. Can you explain what he just said? Yes. Today we meet artist Jung Yeon Chul. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was born and raised in Seoul, but since he loved Jeju Island so much, before he did a one-year life in Jeju. Mm-hmm. He also did like one-month life in Jeju. But after all that, at the end of the last year, mm-hmm. uh, he decided to come back to Jeju Island and has been living here for the past nine months now. Oh. Okay. The artist originally majored in photography, mm-hmm. but as his interest in environmental issues grew, uh, he began to work on plastic arts and crafts. So the work that he is currently doing is upcycling. Wow. Uh, for example, like collecting bottle caps. Oh, okay. That's I some see. of the stuff that he does for upcycling. Mm-hmm. Also, he's a manager of the Jeju Clean Boys Club. Mm-hmm. Uh, he started the club that picks up trash around the sea. And he still uh, takes part in it up to today. Oh, wow. So what made him fall in love with Jeju Island? Uh, He mentioned that he actually fell in love with Jeju Island because of the Ole Trail. Oh, I see. And I know there's a lot of people who fall in love with Jeju because of the Ole Trail. Yeah. Uh, Because he majored in photography, uh, he says Ole Trail is where you can take, you know, many lovely and attractive pictures. Uh Uh-huh. So far, he says he hasn't completed um, all the courses yet, mm-hmm. but he's been to half of the entire Ole Trail courses. Wow. And his goal is completing all uh, of it one day. Someday, okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a good goal. So, majoring in photography and to transform into upcycling art must have not been easy to consider to do that. Right. Uh, in making such transformation, he said he had a very realistic consideration about it, actually. I see. Uh, while being aware about the plastics being thrown away, he realized that 
these were actually precious materials mm -hmm. uh, being thrown away. So much of it being thrown away, he thought to himself, if I collect all this, I would have a bunch of materials for free. That's right. Yeah. So when he was working as a photographer, this kind of work was not possible. Mm -hmm. But working as an upcycling artist, he was able to gather this thrown away materials, mm -hmm. transform them into a new artworks that have meanings and even make some money out of it. Right. Uh, since starting upcycling art, he has had many offers from individuals and businesses and also other artists wanting to collaborate with him as well. Uh, he says that it's become a field that many have grown interested in. So it's pretty popular these days. Uh, yeah, I've seen some people do this, actually. One of my students was, um, he said that he was doing some kind of business in upcycling. Mm. Interesting stuff. So how long has he been working as an upcycling artist? Uh, he said he has been an upcycling artist since he started two years ago. I see. Okay, wow. I imagine he must really cherish his first artwork that he made as an upcyclist artist. Can you tell us what it was? Yeah. Um, so the first work uh, was a small round shape like a ping pong ball. Uh huh. Uh, it actually had like various colors because mm -hmm. the colors were melted into it. He would melt the bottle caps. I see. And make it into like this ball. Uh, so it represents earth covered with plastic he says oh okay uh, we have a picture of it as well on our instagram yes that's right mm -hmm. i was going to mention that uh, also the ironic thing about it is that it actually looks pretty yes and if you look at one of it it actually looks like the shape of the earth it actually looks like a miniature yeah. earth. like he didn't uh, intentionally like draw or anything he just melts the bottle caps and it just and naturally, it came, naturally out came out like, out that. like that wow amazing uh, so actually he gave it the name plastic planet mm-hmm and was even able to have it made into keychain oh, wow. and had them sold as well. It, it does have a lot of meaning in it, doesn't it? Right. Wow. Mm. Did he share any story of what might have made him to make such a change? Yeah, um, let's listen to his story first. Okay. Uh, 3년 전에 파나마에 간 적이 있는데 파나마에 있는 원주민 마을에 갔어요. 그래서 거기서도 이제 사진 작업을 하러 갔었는데 그 원주민분들은 완전히 옛날 삶의 방식대로 살고 계셨던 거죠. 그래서 뭐 플라스틱도 거의 안 쓰시고 어 와이파이도 없고 뭐어 화장실도 바다에서 이제 해결하시기도 하고 막그 정도로 이제 완전 옛날 방식으로 살고 계신데 이제 그분들이 사시는 해변가에는 도시에서 온 쓰레기들이 막 계속 밀려와서 쌓여 있는 거죠. 근데 처리할 수 있는 시설이 없으니까 그냥 계속 쌓이기만 하는 거예요. 그래서 가끔 가다 너무 이제 많으니까 이제 땅을 파가지고 거기에서 태우기도 하는데 이제 그 태우면 또그 연기가 다시 마을로 가고 아기, 아이들은 또그 연기 다 마시는 거죠. 그러니까 그런 거 보고 이 사람들은 쓰지도 않은 거 때문에 이렇게 피해를 보는구나. 저, 제가 한국 가서 뭔가 근데 그 중에 이제 플라스틱이 제일 많았던 거죠. 그래서 플라스틱으로 무언가를 했으면 좋겠다라는 생각으로 한국 와가지고 네, 그런 플라스틱 작업도 시작하게 되고 음. 시작하게 된것 같습니다. Can you please elaborate on what he just said? Yes. Um, so about three years ago, he had a chance to go to Panama mm -hmm. and to a native village there called Guanayala, mm -hmm. uh, which is home to the indigenous people known as the Guanas. Uh, he actually went there because of his work, uh, taking pictures, ah. and was able to see how indigenous people still live in the ways of the past. Mm -hmm. So they were rarely using plastics. They don't have Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. And they even used the sea as the bathroom. Oh, yes. Mm. But even though their lifestyle is that of the past, on the shore that they live, uh, you can see piles of trash that's been washed away from cities. Right. Uh, since they don't have any facilities to handle such waste and mm -hmm. trash, uh, the trash continued to get piled. Mm -hmm. uh, but at times, they would dig a hole and burn them as well. Uh -huh. um, however, by burning the trash, harmful smokes would be made, and the children in the village would have to breathe in all that smoke. Mm -hmm. uh, seeing that, uh, artist Jung Yeon-chul 
uh, could not understand why the people who did not even use such trash mm -hmm. had to be the ones that suffer from it. Oh, yeah. So actually seeing all that with his own eyes, he thought to himself, what can I do when I go back to Korea? Uh -huh. And also seeing that most of the trash were plastics, that's how he got the idea of wanting to do something related to plastics. And that's how um, his work got started. I see. It was a life-changing experience for him. Mm. So through real-life experience, he was able to feel the seriousness of the environmental issues, especially his time in Panama, seeing the people suffer from waste. That must have been a real shock for him. So now I wonder about uh, how he linked this back to Jeju Island. Are there trashes on the shore of Jeju Island that have been washed away all the way from other countries? Uh, yes, uh, he said, of course. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of the trash comes from China, he says. Mm. Uh, this is mainly because of the sea current. He mm -hmm. explains that as well uh, from his knowledge. He says a lot of the trash uh, we throw away here in Korea mm -hmm. or can be found a lot in Japan as well. I see. Because of the current. Mm -hmm. And even all the way to Hawaii, they wow. say. Wow. Uh, but besides from trash from Japan and China, he says you can at times find trash actually from all over the world oh, at the shore as well. I see. So starting working in upcycling, he was able to come to Jeju Island, the island that, that he loves. Now, can you tell us more about Jeju Clean Boys Club and about the fun and meaningful activities that they do? Yes. Uh, let's listen first. Okay. Jeju Clean Boys Club is... 음, 매일 아침에 어, 가까운 해안가에서 쓰레기를 줍는 팀이고요. 저희가 원래 시작은 제주도 동쪽의 하도리에서 시작을 했어요. 제가 처음 제주도 온 것도 이제 하도리에 있는 게스트하우스로 왔었고 그 게스트하우스에서 만난 친구들이랑 이제 아침에 근무 전에 바닷가에 놀러 나갔는데 쓰레기들도 있으니까 줍자 이래서 Mm -hmm. Yes, what did he just say? So Jeju Clean Boys Club is a team that picks up trash mm -hmm. at the nearest shore every morning. Uh, they originally started in the east of Jeju Island at the village of Hadori. Yes. Uh, this was the first village where the artist came to work as a staff of a guest house on Jeju Island. Mm -hmm. uh, at this guest house, he meets friends uh, who would go to the sea in the morning before work started. Uh, when they went to the shore every time, they, they would see trash. Mm -hmm. And that's when they decided to pick them up. And that's how this club got started. Oh, I see. Uh, like that, they would fill uh, 100 days of picking up trash at the shore. Mm -hmm. And that's how they uh, ended the season one in Hadori. Oh, wow. I see. Yeah. Okay, so they, have they only finished season one so far? Uh, no, actually, just a couple of days ago, they filled 100 days again uh -huh. and ended season two. Oh, wow. And that was in Koneri. Ah. Uh, the reason why season two was held in Koneri of Ewarup uh, was because one of the team members of Jeju Clean Boys Club has actually moved to the area. Oh, I see. So they're kind of moving around the island, aren't right, they? Right, right. So it doesn't seem like the club was intentionally made, but how did they come up with the name and stay active like they are? Uh, first of all, this is a story of how they came up with the name. Mm -hmm. uh, because the artist would go out every morning to pick up trash, uh, one friend at the guest house would greet him by saying, Hey, clean boy. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, and because that sounded funny just uh -huh. like you laughed um, they decided to use the name okay and since they work in jeju they added uh the name jeju as well uh-huh and because they are not some type of company or a profit making um activity mm -hmm. they're doing it just for the pleasure oh that's why they added the word club okay as used in like soccer teams and you know, oh. they use it at like golf courses, right. country club. Yes. Uh, and since they are acting as a club, wanting to keep a record and let others know about their work, mm -hmm. uh, they show and inform people about what they do uh, through their Instagram. I see. Which is at Jeju Clean Boys Club. At Jeju Clean Boys Club. club. Good to know. All and right. And they got a lot of good pictures. Uh, like after they work, uh -huh. they take a, like a group picture. Yeah. And you can see like, 
the fun that they have mm-hmm. and even the work that they did because you s- you'll see a lot of bags filled with uh, plastic um, right and trash trash all right if you are in jeju 88.7 in jeju city 88.1 in seogipo city 101.9 in the daejong area We talked about this club a bit and how they keep records of their activities through their Instagram. I imagine through their the Instagram, the club became bigger and bigger uh, as it was promoting its activities. Uh, yes. Uh, at first, he said they started with friends at the guest house mm-hmm. that he worked at um, who would wake up early in the morning mm-hmm. and at times participate. Uh, then they had people nearby uh, doing like one month's life in Jeju. Mm-hmm. Uh, those people participated as well. Mm. And those people began to come out almost every day, uh, bringing along friends with them. I see. So without even having to advertise or anything on their Instagram uh, and just asking to send a DM if oh, you're interested. I see. Uh, that's how they grew the group. Um Like that, one or two members continue to join the club. Um, And working together every day, the members feel like they became friends, colleagues, and even now family. Wow, sounds like they were enjoying themselves as Mm -hmm. they were doing that. And maybe this is a good time to read Paulina's question because she said, what requisites do you need to become a member of this club? And you just mentioned, you can just DM them through Instagram. Right, so just uh, visit their Instagram. And if you're interested, you can, you know, send them a direct message and they'll be probably like, oh, you're welcome to join. So the only thing you need to know is you need to get up early. Uh, yes, you have right. to get up early. <laughs> right? You have to be an early bird. Okay, yes. <laughs> good to know. So that they you can start together. So they finished season one in Hadori for 100 days and also season two in Koneri for another 100 days as well. Does this mean that all the members have to participate for the entire 100 days? Uh, No. They have many members in the club. Mm-hmm. Uh, not all of them have to come out for all 100 days. Uh, Good to know. <laughs> but, but in average, five to six members participate for the activity mm-hmm. uh, per day, per day. Uh, he says. And even though individual members may not be able to participate uh, due to their like personal matters, mm-hmm. the club never misses a day. Wow, I see. So as a club... The uh, leaders uh, of right. the club, right? Well, yeah, but the club itself... Um, they do it for 100 days Mm -hmm. without missing a day. Right. So like eating every day, every morning at 8 Uh a.m. at the sea. Oh, really? Uh, Right. 8 a.m. Oh, Mm -hmm. together? Yes. Okay. The day starts Uh (laughs) uh, by picking up the trash. Okay. They start by picking up the trash together. Mm -hmm. Wow. At 8 (laughs) a.m. Are you not an early bird? If you have to be out there by 8 Uh a.m., what time would you wake up, Jamie? I would have to... Well, me? Yeah. From Jeju City? Like 6 a.m. maybe? 6 a.m. 6.30? Yeah. Or maybe 7? You should you should DM them. <laughs> maybe, yeah. <laughs> what about you? You're closer. Oh, uh, yes. I, I, I mean, I wake up pretty early in the morning. Oh, you do? Mm-hmm. What time do you Like 6, 7. <gasps> really? Mm-hmm. You're an early bird. Because my work starts early as well. Oh, I see. Mm. If I didn't have work, I, I would join them. Okay. But too bad. I have work. Okay. <laughs> 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 on your day off. Uh, yes, on, <laughs> on my day off. <laughs> okay. Yes. All right. So they must have many memorable me- moments that they had during their time uh, picking up trash. What can you share any of them? Yeah. Uh, let's listen first. 진짜 감사한 마음으로 막 죽고 너무 기뻤거든요. 그냥 이 일을 저희가 할수 있다는 게 우리가 두 다리만 있으면 사실 뭐잘살수 있지 않냐 이렇게 그렇게 진짜 매일 매일 되게 특별한 했던 날들이었고. 지금도 그래요. 지금도 되게 특별하고 근데 제석이가 자주 얘기하는 건 저희가 청소한 해변에서 사람들이 사진 찍는 거 보면은 되게 감동이 온대요. 왜냐면은 깨끗한 바다를 이제 즐기는 모습인데 저희가 치운 거죠. 이렇게 쓰레기 있으면 사진을 못 찍을 거 아니에요. 약간 그런 거 봤을 때 He says something very in- uh, important. Please share his message. So for the artist, he is always thankful just to be able to pick up trash and mm-hmm. says every day is special for him. Mm-hmm. Um, but his friend Chesok, who is the member that created the club together mm-hmm. and is actually a friend who is uh, living with him, says that he is moved when he sees people taking pictures at the sea that they've cleaned. Oh, yeah. Uh, because of it, uh, they had not 
seen those um if they had not done what they do mm -hmm. probably people would not have taken pictures right of course so so then that moves him I you know see. to see that he's touched by the pictures that they take yeah and also he told us another story where um he met uh bu uh -huh. a member of the idol group 17 oh wow uh, he didn't meet bu Seung-gwan but he met okay. his father okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right <laughs> and uh his father actually seeing them picking up trash in the morning at the sea uh-huh uh, he said they reminded him of his son so ah. he bought them jajangmyeon as well. Oh, how nice of him. Yeah. Well, sounds like they have great memories, mm -hmm. but were there any difficult situations while picking up trash? Uh, I asked, but um, he said everything is great. Oh, really? <laughs> like, but <laughs> if there, you know, if, he did say if there has to be one thing, he says maybe one of those days where it's really difficult to get up in the morning. Oh, yes, because yeah, we're I, humans. I mean, yeah, everybody has those yeah. days. I have it frequently okay well i was expecting something <laughs> like <laughs> you have it frequently uh, yeah i have it frequently i, I, I was expecting frequently. you to say every day no just kidding <laughs> <laughs> i was thinking maybe they might have some uh difficult times when the the weather is weather? not good yeah, yeah yeah well that doesn't seem to be but a problem for them, bother them. exactly mm -hmm. when they go out how long do they pick up trash and how much do they gather uh, they actually make it short and fun because they do it early in the morning and there's people who have to go to work as well. I see. Uh, so they do about 30 to 40 minutes. Uh -huh. uh, but if you look at their Instagram pictures uh, where they post the uh, commemorative uh, photographs of their work, mm -hmm. uh, you can actually see how much trash they gather in such short time. Oh, uh, yeah. So, you know, I yeah. actually tried it one time without a club, just my, myself. I just took a bag and it just filled within minutes. Oh, wow. So I had to go. I had to do several trips actually mm -hmm. wow okay so what has he felt from picking up trash uh, at first he says it was literally just picking up trash mm -hmm. uh, but as he did more and more he began to study more and more about it and let's listen to what else he had to say great 기본으로 돌아가면은 각 그냥 집에서 각 일상에서 집에서 조금만 줄일 수 있는 게 제일 중요한 것 같아요 그래서 저희도 이제 매일매일 그렇게 꼭 하려고 하는 이유가 그거거든요. 저희의 일상으로 만들기 위해서. 근데 그게 꼭 저희는 이제 해변에 가까우니까 그게 가능한데 뭐 서울에 있는 분들은 해변이 없을 거 아니에요. 도시에 계신 분들은. 그러면은 이제 집에서 똑같이 할수 있는 거죠. 오늘 뭐 커피 일회용 잔에 만 먹을 거를 한 잔만 줄이, 줄이는 거를 매일 하면은 그게 쌓이잖아요. 그러니까 그런 작은 실천이 많은 사람들이 그 작은 실천을 하는 게 제일 효과적인 것 같고요. 이제 그러다 보면 사실 뭐 정책이나 기업들이나 다 따라오게 되지 않나. 왜냐면은 다수가 그걸 하고 있으면은 그들은 그거를 Wow, so mm. these words coming from him, it's it's very strong. Mm. Now I'm going to think about him when I use plastic. Oh. Yeah, yes. seriously. You should, you so should. So share with the, his message with the world, please. Yeah, so uh, he says, if we go back to the fundamentals, the most important thing is to reduce the waste that we build daily at home. Right. Uh, and that's the reason why they do their activities every day. Mm -hmm. It has to be a routine, he, mm -hmm. he believes. Uh, so since they are near the sea, it's possible for them to take part in the sea. Mm -hmm. But if you're in Seoul, you can start from your own home. Right. Um, he, he mentions, for example, you know, reducing the use of disposable cups for coffee. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people when they have a cup of coffee um, here, like mixed coffee. Yes. They always seem to look for the paper cup. Right. The right, disposable right. cups. Right. Right. Uh, so we can we can reduce that by drinking less coffee. Mm -hmm. uh, he believes this small actions are the most effective uh, ways. Uh, he thinks as more and more people take action, policies and businesses 
change in accordance to the majority's um, actions as well. Yeah, I totally agree. And I think it's about time that we as consumers start to think about the packages when when it's time to purchase an item. And rather than just picking it up and taking it home, Mm. you have to be aware of what we're taking home because that is going to end up in the trash, right? Right. So, yeah, I'm totally going to be thinking about this guy now. Right. Wow. I mean, some of the products have really, some of the products here in Korea, I've noticed, have useless packaging. Like, I don't know why they come in those boxes. Oh, you mean like, like yeah, sometimes come, there's like, too much plastic. Yeah. Exactly. Yes, that's so true. Yeah, there, yeah, there I needs... I mean, I got trash piled up at home. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> and it just accumulates so quickly. So yeah. it's kind of giving us such a big message that yes. he's saying right here. Okay, lastly, where does the artist recommend visiting on Jeju Island? Uh, because when he came to Jeju, he enjoyed taking photos while work, uh, walking the Ole Trail. He recommends that. Mm-hmm. Um, but also he recommends participating in program Clean Ole, mm-hmm. uh, where you receive a trash bag at the beginning of the trail and yeah. you fill up the bag while walking the trail. That's great. Uh, they also give small gift for the bags you fill with trash. Uh, while doing that, he also recommends checking their Instagram out to join them to clean the sea as well. That so would be nice. Clean the old trail and clean the sea. Yeah. Oh, what a course. Oh. It's a, it's great. Yeah, it's a great traveling course. Yes, and you feel it makes you feel good mm. as you're traveling because you're kind of participating in making our world a clean place at the same time. So when is season three going to start? So season three is going to start once the heat is over and mm-hmm. the summer starts to get cooler around mid August. Okay. Uh, anyone is welcome to participate. So if you're in Jeju, please visit. Uh, but there is another place as well uh, that he recommends. And sh- so let's listen. Okay. 한라산 가셔야 돼요. 한라산 제주도에서는 한라산 꼭 한번 한 번쯤 오르셔 보기를 강력 추천드리고요. 한국에서 제일 높은 산이기도 하고 또 예, 너무 아름답고요. 올라갔을 때딱그 백록담을 봤을 때그 뿌듯하고 짜릿함이 있습니다. 한라산 한 다섯 번간것 같아요. 요새는 좀 더워서 또못 간지 좀 되긴 했는데 네, 한라산 너무 아름답습니다. 특히 눈 왔을 때 겨울에 아름답고요. 또 눈이 녹, 녹아서 백록담이 또 차이는 시즌에 여름에 아마 많이 차 있겠죠. 비, 비 오고 그러면. 네, 한라산을 그래서 추천합니다. What did he say? So, it's a must and he recommends the highest mountain mountain in South Korea, which is the Hallasan Mountain. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, he's been to the top 백록담 five times mm-hmm. and says you get the like electrifying feeling when you see it. Uh, he says it's especially beautiful to visit during uh, in the winter when when there are snows. Uh, or when the snow melts, or, or after like it rains a lot, mm-hmm. then you can see the Pengnokdam filled with water. Yeah. So he recommends visiting. And when he expresses that, he, you can feel that he <laughs> oh, really, yeah, yeah. really appreciates it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, well, what everything that he's doing is amazing. And the message that he's giving out to the world is amazing. And the story that you brought in is amazing. So you are amazing. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you for counting me. In. Yes, of uh, course. Yeah, thank you. You're the one that uh, introduced this story to us. So thank you so much. Thank you, Jamie. And take care until we meet you again next week. Okay, Jamie. You All too. right. Well, I hope you enjoyed that segment. If you're curious to find out more about Jeju, we encourage you to go check out our website at arirangradio.com forward slash wonders of Jeju. Or you can check out our Facebook page at Wonders of Jeju as well as our Instagram page at Wonders of Jeju. We're going to take you on a journey to learn more about what's happening here on the island. 